the MTV at the Pullman Hotels for the Melbourne Cup 2014 organized by the Pattaya International Ladies Club. And also here with me is the president of the club, Hello Ranson. Hello, Sue. Nice to meet you again. Nice to meet you. I think my microphone is like over the cup. <laughs> so we come up a little. Okay, so Hello. Yet, this is yet another charity event. It, it most certainly is, yes. Uh, we are running two different sweeps today, and all the money from those two sweeps will be allocated towards the 12 different charity projects that PILC are running. Why do you choose Melbourne Cup? Well, American Cup seems to be very, very popular amongst uh, the ladies from all over the world. I mean, I'm Danish myself, and I had never heard about the Melbourne Cup before I arrived to Thailand. And here it seems to be a really, really big thing. Yeah. What better than to get the ladies all dressed up with their hats oh, yeah, to come yeah. and put some money in the charity? Yeah, any, any, anything goes when, when that's concerned. And people, let's face it, I mean, we like get, getting dressed up and put on beautiful de uh, hats. How many occasions do you have to, to do that? So We have some exceptions to the rule here, you know. Oh, I have? <laughs> I hadn't even noticed that, so <laughs> It's an effort for me to get dressed and to okay. do all these things. Well, well, I must admit, it is actually an effort for me as well. I'm not really a dressed up person at all. Uh, I had a very good friend who actually had a f other friend uh, create my hat because she knows I'm completely lost when it uh, goes uh, for dresses and hats. So uh, who knows? I might win the prize for best hat today. You never know. Yeah, is it difficult to find the hats? Because I was looking for some. You know, you have uh, decorative hats, little feathery things, you know, the small hats, but it doesn't suit me at all. I ended up borrowing my niece's hat. Okay, well. Put a scarf on it and that's... Yeah, then we all look a little bit... It's just an opportunity to look a little bit different on a, on a normal weekday. Right. Yeah. Right. What about the Danish people? Do they have this kind of thing? Well, there is a race, of course, every year, which is very important, but nothing like this, nothing like this. I mean, I understand that in Australia, the whole of Australian stops, and everybody is watching the, the race for those two, three minutes it... Uh, it's, it's on, so it's it's a huge thing in Australia. I heard that even the kangaroos stop hopping and jumping. Oh, I'm sure they do. I'm sure. <laughs> well, they do. Yeah. Maybe they're wearing a hat as well. You never know. You never know. Well, you never know. We have to go and check it out. Yeah. So, okay. So, what's in store today? Well, today we are well. We are enjoying ourselves. Uh, we will be watching the race uh, coming on very uh, very shortly. We will find out who uh, who are the winners, uh, um, and we are uh, also finding out who wins the prize for best hat and best dress. We're just here to have fun, so. Yeah. All right. And what's coming up with the PILC? I see that you have something yes. in your hand. I, I I took the liberty to bring this. Uh, it's uh, the flyer for our Christmas Bazaar, which is coming up on the 23rd of November in Holiday Inn. It's, it will take place from 10 to 4 p.m. in the afternoon. And this is actually the biggest event of the year, the event where we will uh, raise most funds from all the different charities that we are involved in. And I urge people, if you have a couple of hours, please visit the bazaar in Holiday Inn on the 23rd of November. It's 150 baht to get in. Uh, you can buy a raffle book, 500 baht, if you really want to support PILC charities, which I hope you will do. So it's, it's very important to us, and you will help make a big difference if you turn up on the day. Just turn up on the day, there's a lot of shopping to do for the Christmas and beyond. And at the same time, you'll be giving your money to charity to help a lot of underprivileged people. So don't forget, November the 20, 23rd. 23rd at the Holiday Inn. Yeah. Okay, so let's go in and watch the race. Yes, we were, well, we are almost late. We don't <laughs> want to miss it. Any horses racing? All right, so see you next time.
right, for those of you who don't know much about Melbourne Cup, like me, here we have a specialist, Bronwyn. Cheers. Cheers. Here's to the Melbourne Cup, Sue. Now back to business. Mm -hmm. What's Melbourne Cup? Well, the Melbourne Cup's a very famous race in Australia. It's a horse race. And it's always held on the first Tuesday of November. Um, it's part of a race week in the Flemington Race Week, and it's quite famous. We have um, a ladies' day, a family day, and then culminating with the Melbourne Cup on always on um, the Tuesday. It, yeah, a horse race. Horses come from all over the world now um, to race in this race. Um, it's a, uh, a, girl, a race for geldings. It's, it's for, for sort of big, strong horses, if you like. Um, the, the race a few years ago was won by a particular horse who did it in 3 minutes and 16 seconds. I noticed today the race was done in 3 minutes and 17.29 seconds. So this horse came very close to um, coming in the time. But it, it's an Australian icon. Right. I've watched a few Melbourne Cups, but never really completely understood what it's about. But it's amazing that the whole world, not the whole world, a few nations stop for three minutes. Yes. I mean, it's a national holiday in Australia. Um, I don't really quite know how this whole tradition of the Melbourne Cup arose, other than that from my lifetime, and I'm 63 years old, um, we have always had a holiday for Melbourne Cup. And families all over Australia have barbecues, they have parties. But, um, doesn't matter what state you live in, where you are in Australia, you, you stop and you celebrate. And then everybody stops and watches the race itself. Um, people have sweeps so that they can have some participation in who might win the race. I think it started in the Victorian days. Uh, yes, and it's always been at Flemington Racecourse. It's always been in Melbourne, Australia. And I suspect that um, it was one of those activities that during the Depression and times when things were bad, it was something to make light, to bring a bit of joy to people. So, yes. Yeah. Um, How many nations participated this year? I'm not sure. I know that Ireland, I know Hong Kong, Germany, Japan... All the major horse racing nations this year are participating. And the other thing that's really interesting is that it is enormous for the fashion industry in Australia. Women spend forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 Australian. But then if you win the fashion on the field, that can be your launching pad as a model. It can be your way to meet your new husband. So the, the fashion on the field in Australia or in Melbourne is also enormous. Not to mention the hats. Oh, the hats and the fascinators. Yes. The fascinators are, um, yes, huge business. Um, you can pay $1,000, which is 30,000 baht, for one of these for the day. One of the things with the fashion in the fields in, in, on Flemington and the race day is that it's not about buying an expensive outfit. It's about being eclectic. It's about putting things together. And women have won a $400,000 prize from a $7 dress from um, a second-hand shop. But the way they put it together, they made the hat themselves. The creativity. It's, it's really about creativity. So it's, it's, a, it's a, an eclectic Australianism, the whole thing, yes. yes. And I see that a lot of women are enjoying themselves there. I'm not sure how many people understood the whole Melbourne Cup thing, but they are definitely enjoying themselves. Um, and, you know, here in Padia, it doesn't matter that they didn't really understand the fact that they get into the race. They, they love the race. They are enthusiastic. They bought a few tickets in a sweep and, and the money goes to charity. All those. And, and it's a good fun day. It's, it's fun. Yes. Yes. The whole nation stops for three minute race and it's all for a good cause. Yes. Thank you very much. Bro. Thanks, Sue. Great. <laughs> Here I am standing with the first timers of the Melbourne Cup and let's see what they have to say. Well I must say as I have never been to a horse race before I'm so happy and honored to be here with the wonderful people of Pattaya and the PILC ladies and we're having the best time ever. Cheers! <laughs> and the food is great. <laughs> this is my first time also and it's great. 
and we're having an absolute blast. So cheers and uh, well done to all the winners. <laughs> Melbourne Cup is fantastic. Coming from America, I've never been to an event as extravagant as this. All the women are so gorgeous with their hats and fascinators and dresses. It is a beautiful event. It's actually great fun. It's the first Melbourne Cup I've ever attended. Um, I've been to Ascot, obviously, being from England, and Epsom races, but um, I've never got to Australia, so I've never been to the Melbourne Cup. So this is a little bit, uh, a little slice of Australia in Patea. So it's actually very nice, and the PLC have done a great job in organising the event. So cheers to the PLC and Hella and Reagan and Nancy.